So there's something I want to talk about today. Um, I've been thinking about this a little bit. I've been doing some readings too, and it got me thinking even more. In a way, I kind of want to record this so that I can remember it, but also to share it with anybody who wants to listen. Basically, what I want to talk about is that a lot of people say that it's important to be positive, and it's true. I think it is really important to be positive, and it's not cliche. It's uh, it's 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 it's, re it's very true. I believe that because, um, like um, Sean Acor was saying, basically our mind is kind of designed to uh, focus on only a few things at a time. Um, some can say that you know the unconscious, not the subconscious, can absorb everything. Uh, you know, like I'm sitting in a room right now and everything around me, I'm absorbing this uh, as knowledge. And, um, you know, tapping into it can be quite difficult, but not impossible. Just like uh, what Malcolm Gladwell is saying in uh, Blank. But what I want to get back to is that because we can only focus on a few things at a time, because of that, we tend to see things in trends and patterns. That's how we kind of, I think, understand the world. That's why we put things into categories. That's why we have stereotypes. So how does this relate to happiness? Is basically, if you keep scanning the world and you train your mind to see the good things in life, you will only, well no, you will often see the good things in life. And not only that, you can start making connections between these different things. And all of a sudden, you kind of feel like everything is kind of meant to be. In a sense that, um, if you are focused on something, chances are you will be constantly thinking about it and you will start to make links between everything that you experience. So for example, lately I've been um, thinking, I've been reading about vulnerability a lot. And um, I've been thinking about that a lot too. I've been trying to practice vulnerability as well. It's something I'm struggling with a lot. Um, and one of the and and just the people that I talk to, and the way I see life, my perspective is different. So I scan and I understand vulnerability even more. I, I, I now I actually look for it and try to recognize it in other people because it's the only way that you can deal with your own vulnerability is to practice self compassion. Self compassion is basically telling yourself it's okay. You know, like, if, if you fuck up, it's okay. And it's it's kind of the opposite of this mentality of scarcity or this attitude of scarcity. Like the idea of that you, you, you're not good enough, you're not blank enough, you're not whatever enough, you're not tall enough, you're not strong enough, you're not smart enough, you're not good enough. So the idea here is that because you can recognize vulnerability in other people, you can connect and relate to them and kind of be saying like, no, it's it's okay. It's okay if you, you failed um, your test. There's going to be other opportunities. And so, you can only be compassionate to other people or really be... You can only give or share or truly be compassionate to others if you are with it yourself because you need to kind of like tap down into your own vulnerability and you need to be self-compassionate in order to be able to relate to it and also to kind of know what to do or say to another person when they are feeling vulnerable. So where am, I, where am I getting at is that lately I've been kind of identifying and I kind of see the world a little differently. You know, like for example today, I, um, I finally met uh, the kid that I'm mentoring in a basketball program to fight um, uh, high school dropouts. Um, and to promote, you know, staying in school. When I first met the kid, I, he's in grade seven, grade eight maybe. When I first met him, I saw that he was nervous and he's shy and, you know, it, it was kind of cute. Like he was all polite and everything. It was really nice. And you kind of see like, you know, he doesn't know really how to act or react or kind of what to do. And I saw that vulnerability in him. And I kind of saw it in myself too. I mean, I was in a way very, I was vulnerable as well. I showed up over there, didn't know what to expect, didn't even know where to go. I just went to the school and kind of figured my way out over there. But when I saw him and I saw and I felt 
his vulnerability, I was able to really connect, I think, or at least it's, I think it's the first step to connect. So because I saw that, I have a better idea how to react, you know? And when you see vulnerability in somebody else, you also feel vulnerable. And that's when I was just, I got that feeling. And, and this is why I think coming back to happiness is that the way we see life is very important. And we always, we always make a lot of connection, different things. So sometimes we feel like it's meant to be. Sure, I'm okay with saying it was meant to be. What I would add to it is saying that you have been seeking this this whole time. Unconsciously or consciously, you've been making connections about different things that kind of relate to it. So I'll add another cliche saying that if you really put your mind to it, you can achieve it. And that's, I think, how it works. Because the way that we scan the world, we recognize different patterns and we kind of get to see what we're focused on. And if right now I'm, I'm focused on vulnerability a lot and trying to understand that and, and know how to react to it and, and engage with it, not to use it, but to engage with it so that I can be comfort more comfortable with my vulnerability and to know how to be there for other people who are vulnerable, then I start seeing it in other people. And this is how I think you become more happy if you're positive, because if you're positive, you will identify what are the positive things in your life. If you don't do that, if you identify all the negative problems in your life, it's the opposite. You will only see the negative things and nothing will ever be good enough. So, yeah. What do you think? <laughs>